Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Pioneering the spirit of the Wild West with 70 years of legendary innovation by your side. Built on the legacy of the Ruger Single Six, the new Wrangler is aimed for the drifter in all of us. Saddle up and ride, this one is wanted. The perfect revolver, whether it's your first or your next. Everybody, thank you for turning in to this episode of the Wild Nine Cup Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Titus, and I am here with Foster from Stay Frosty Defensive, Defensive, Defensive Tactics. Tactics. Stay Frosty. This woman, I, I met you at the Women of, a Gun, of the Gun event last year, and I was like, oh my gosh, she is amazing. You are absolutely adorable, and you're crushing it in the shooting sports industry. And you're really somebody I think everyone can look up to. Like you have a training program and you're doing so much. And I want to share your mission on how did you get involved in shooting sports and what in the heck brought you here? Christy, I thank you. Thank you for reaching back. Yeah. So I really appreciate it. Let me pause you really quick. I'm going to bring that right there. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So thank you for reaching back. As you said, you would. So I really appreciate you. Definitely. Um, So every time I get asked that question, it's always a different answer because there's so many different reasons why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Number one, I want to live. Yeah. I want to survive, yeah. right? But I also want to educate other people mm-hmm. on how to do things properly and legally. Mm-hmm. It's going to slip in a little bit. Do we, do we need to widen them a little bit, or are we good? I think it's better. Good, okay. okay. Yeah, so it's the education and training portion, because in my community, it's really lacking. Mm-hmm. You know, we were raised on, don't touch the firearm, mm-hmm. don't touch it, you know, mm-hmm. but in my, my, my thoughts is we have to touch it, pick it up in order to put it down safely, mm-hmm. you understand? So mm-hmm. this is why I'm here, is to educate, to train, especially mm-hmm. our youth, because I, I'm tired of getting those emails or those um, videos where you can't unsee those things, those traumatic things, yeah. right? And so hopefully we can be more proactive, and that's, yeah. that's really what the culture is about right now, yeah. being proactive and not reactive. Being your own first responder, being, your being own a, first safe, responder. a safe, responsible firearms owner, yes. and train, train, train. Training is essential. So with your defense tactics classes, what are you teaching your students? And what is your big hope of their takeaway from every experience with you? So really and truly, it's not about precision shooting. Mm-hmm. It's really about avoiding. Mm-hmm. It's about avoiding as much as possible. So what we train on is universal safety, mm-hmm. the foundation, which a lot of us sometimes overlook, the mm-hmm. foundational portion. So we talk about universal firearm safety. Mm-hmm. If you don't learn anything else, you know the five mm-hmm. or this several different uh, uh, universal safety, but we really, really enforce, we encourage, we, uh, you, you can't do anything without the universal safety. So that's so what, what are we your five? Fo- well, definitely you treat all firearms as if they are loaded, right? Okay. Keep your finger off the trigger mm-hmm. until you are ready to shoot, mm-hmm. know your target, what's, what's in front yeah. and what's beyond it, right. you know? We have another one, if it drops, you kind of leave it, you know, if it, your firearm falls, you leave it. Um, so. That's basically some of the things we mm-hmm. teach, but again, is situational awareness. Mm-hmm. We cannot stress that enough because not everybody's going to be a firearms owner. Not yeah. everybody wants to be a firearms yeah. owner. So you know what? If you don't have that, you need you need another form of defense. Situational mm-hmm. awareness. Yeah. You know. And National Rifle Association has a really great program that I'm certified to teach. It's called Refuse to Be a Victim. Refuse to be a victim. And it is a non-firearms based training that really, like you said, talks about situational awareness. Well, that is such a broad based term yes. as we've learned over the years. You know, your brain can only handle so much at one time so if you say well you need to be aware all the time well okay that's impossible to be aware okay so instead of being universally aware well, where where are our nearest emergency exits yes um what where are our dark walls where can we not see around or behind where where are we going to be able to get safety and security in a situation yes. um 
coming out of an elevator, you know, how do we enter Ex and exit. exit those safely? Parking garages, how do we keep ourselves safe? Because these are the places that we're most likely to be victimized. Absolutely. Um, and there are places where, you know, bad guys are going to be more prone to showing up. Yes. And, and if we can avoid or, or be safe about that, that's that's our first line of defense is yes. avoiding. If someone's making you uncomfortable and they're walking behind you, cross the street. street. Cross. Go to the other side. Yes. If you're not comfortable with somebody that's walking behind you, step into a business, ask them to call the police. Always trust your gut, gut. because that is that is your body telling you, hello, an alarm, and perhaps un unconsciously your brain has saw something or picked up something yes. that you consciously don't pick up on. And and that's really important that we just, yes. we we follow those those safety signals that our body is giving us Absolutely. and don't ignore them. Absolutely. You said, you said it all, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's definitely. what we're trying to do. Definitely. So um, give us a little bit more insight on, on your journey here. Yeah. What brought you into being a firearms instructor? Yes. So I'm a licensed, licensed social worker. Mm -hmm. And so I'm used to seeing the victims. Yeah. I'm used to seeing the trauma. And also, I'm also used to getting that vicarious trauma. Yeah. Right? And so I said to myself, I need to be able to catch it head on. Like, I want to teach people to be more proactive mm -hmm. and not not be a victim. Mm -hmm. So as a firearm instructor, most people say you went from social work to firearm instructor, that's extreme. No, it's really not. No. You're still empowering people. Mm -hmm. You're still providing resources and information to people mm -hmm. so that they can be their own first responder, so mm -hmm. that they are not victimized. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I realized as a social worker, I was taking on a lot of that vicarious trauma. Yeah. And people are coming to me broken. You know, and, and afraid and afraid. Yes. And they felt like they don't have options or that they they don't have the ability to defend, defend themselves. themselves or protect themselves. And, and I really feel like um, the people that need the most protections are often the ones that are most afraid to seek it out. Yes. And yes. and getting those people trained and confident in whether that be with a firearm or going through a course like refuse to be a victim yes. is, is really critical. And yes, and coming from a state such as New York, you know, it's a little bit restrictive. So mm -hmm. people don't even know that they can own firearms. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm here to encourage, to educate. You mm -hmm. can be a firearms owner, a legal firearms mm -hmm. owner. There's a channel, there's a process. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of, that's part of uh, our curriculum, our class, mm -hmm. that we teach that you can be a firearms owner, a responsible mm -hmm. firearms owner. Mm -hmm. And also in regards to our children, um, I also, the, comp the competitive shooting, mm -hmm. Firearms are villainized, mm -hmm. you know? It's the it's really the people. I still say people kill people. It's not the firearms. Mm -hmm. And so we try to stress that. Like if you put a firearm right here, it will stay there mm -hmm. until someone picks it up and whatever their intents are with that firearm. Mm -hmm. So we try to take that stigma off of the firearm mm -hmm. in the community to say that, you know what, there's some great things. There's hunting, there's collecting, there's so many things that you can do with a firearm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know that the first and foremost is our Second Amendment right mm -hmm. to preserve life. You know, understand, we understand mm -hmm. that. But there's other things for our kids, for our youth. There's comp competitive shooting. You yeah, know, there's, there's scholarships. There's a lot of fun that there's goes into owning a firearm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many other avenues besides what we see on TV. The 6 o'clock news is sensationalized. Mm -hmm. It's real. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's other things as well. Mm -hmm. And so we bring all of that in a nice little bow mm -hmm. and we present it to our community. We do have an excellent shooting community and I think once a, a lot of people that might be apprehensive in picking up shooting sports or even considering shooting as a sport, a lot of times, more often times than not, they've never actually done it or they've had a bad experience where someone has given them, you know, a handgun that might be a little bit more powerful than they're, than they're trained to, to fire yes. and they, they get right. scared it scares them or they you know you've seen a lot of you know grown men that'll give little kids a heavy recoil <laughs> rifle and you know the rifle scope comes back and bites them in the forehead and really? it, it creates a bad experience and so you know ensuring that people have a good positive experience with their firearms and learn that they are so fun to shoot Definitely. And one of the things that we start out with, no matter your size, no matter your age or mm -hmm. whatever your case may be, disability, 22. The yeah. 22 long rifle. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no recoil. There's oh, like, it's it's a, from a youth to a, a seasoned individual as far mm -hmm. as an older person can utilize that. And so we, we start out with that. Mm -hmm. We don't start out with a shotgun 12 gauge because like you said, you want a positive experience. Mm -hmm. And usually our first class is less shooting. It's mm -hmm. more so knowing your state laws. Mm -hmm. Just because you can shoot doesn't mean you should shoot. Mm -hmm. You know, so all those things we try really try to ex we express and we stress during our sessions mm -hmm. that it's a responsibility. It's a great deal of responsibility and it's not for everyone, mm -hmm. you know, but however, situation awareness is for everyone, yeah, <laughs> you right. know, that's and right. that's a great tool. That's a great defense. And so we stress that. 
So you were talking about since the last time I saw you here, which was last year. Yeah. You've went through a lot of training and a lot of things have changed have changed yes, for yes. you. What, share with us some of those changes. Well, one of the things that's changed, especially in our state, is concealed carry mm -hmm. most recently. And we're still going through red tape because mm -hmm. we have those places where you cannot go. You have those, uh, what is that called, your sensitive locations. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your school, your safe, your school zone, gun-free zone. Mm -hmm. So some of those things that we're still trying to get across. But also for myself, mm -hmm. being comfortable with carrying, mm -hmm. conceal, that has been some roller coaster, especially yeah. how we dress as females. Well, yeah. Like, I <laughs> wear tight leggings everywhere. <laughs> and I just thank God my friends at Girls With Guns Clothing make leggings that I can conceal and carry. Carry with. And I saw that video with the belly band because that's, oh, yeah. that's what I use. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love a belly yeah. band. Well, and, I mean, I'm bigger chested, so I, it's easy for me to <laughs> hide that underneath there. But, I mean, there always is, there's always a pro and a con, nice. right? With a belly band, your firearm can be a little bit more difficult to access. Yes. Um, versus appendix. Yes. But it, for me, you know, if I'm wearing a summer dress, I'm not carrying appendix, right? Yes. Like, I mean, it's really difficult to do that unless you have, like, those spanks, Sp holsters. Yes. Um, but the belly band's a great option. And so, you know, having an option is always better than having no options. options. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and also um, being able to go out into the community that mm -hmm. wasn't very two-way friendly yeah. and have these conversations with people, mm -hmm. they're very receptive. Yeah. So that has changed tremendously across mm -hmm. the board in our community. I'm from uh, uh, the New York City area, yeah. which is uh, Nassau County, and also the five boroughs. I don't know mm -hmm. if you're familiar with the, bar the boroughs. No. You know what? My yeah. grandma was, was born and raised in New York, and um, I've really never been there. Okay. You need to visit. I do need to visit. I do. I'm not, you know, I just haven't been, you know, to have that city experience, which is why I have you on here yes. to educate me on what it's like, right? Yeah. No reciprocity with yeah. anybody. Yeah. You have okay. no reciprocity. You got to leave your stuff at home. Yeah. Do yeah. not bring your Anything firearms there. To New York. Yes. So that's a big and major thing. That's something I really wanted to do is to get mm -hmm. out into the community to have mm -hmm. conversation. You never have to come to the range. It doesn't matter if you come to the range or not for me. Mm -hmm. As long as we can have the conversation, the information mm -hmm. is powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, and the laws are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. You know, and and also it's not an important thing. Second yeah. Amendment in our community is not important. There's other things. There's education. There's um, health. Mm -hmm. Health. There's mental health. There's so many other things that's mm -hmm. precedent yeah. in our community. So they're not thinking that Second Amendment is, is attached to all of that. Mm -hmm. You know. So I try to bring it where they can understand that it all um, correlates. Mm -hmm. All of that correlates. Mm -hmm. So if there's women and they, they want to get trained by you and, and they're in your area or um, maybe they're out of area and they, mm -hmm. they want to come train with you, how do they do that? Oh, uh, so one of the things, the website is Stay Frosty Defense, Stay Foster, Stay Frosty. Foster Stay, stay Frosty. Stay com. yes. That's the first one, but also Instagram, which is also mm -hmm. very long. So it's Stay underscore mm -hmm. uh, Frosty mm -hmm. underscore Defensive underscore Tactics mm -hmm. with an S. And so... Females, I really need more of. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of male students. Mm -hmm. Females, I'm not sure of the reason, but definitely need more females. Yeah. So I well, welcome all. We need all. more women yes. in shooting sports, which yes. is why I, you know, really yes. wanted you on the podcast today. And I have some incredible other women that are doing mm -hmm. great things in their communities on the podcast today because I really want this this episode from Shot Show to be a place where a single source where women can tune in and listen. Yes. How do I get my kids involved in shooting sports? How do I get involved with, you know, situational awareness right. training, personal protection training? Yes. Where can I find a local chapter for something like AWA, Armed Women of America? There are so many great women like you that yes. are out there empowering other ladies. And I really want to, I want to shed the light on that to where, you know, you have options. We have, yes. you, you know, like Jen that was just here, she's got two little kids and she's training and teaching and you know you can do it all you can yes. you can be a mom you can be your own first responder yes you can be safe you can yes. be responsible and still and acute. we're all living proof of it right I'm still acute amen sister <laughs> i like that that's right yes yes and that was one of the things when i met you i was like oh my gosh you are amazing i'm like <laughs> mind blown you, like you're amazing you, and you're you, beautiful you, and i love you, your energy you. and thank i love you. what you're really trying to do for your community thank it you. is so needed and and we're all we're all here as a sisterhood mm -hmm. you know for the same reason, to be safe, responsible gun owners, and to so that we can all have the same thing, which is is to be safe. Safe, yes, to We're survive. Safe that in encounter. our family. Yes. Safe in our home. Safe in our walk to our car. Yes. And safe, yes. Fr you know, from anything happening to us, and also being able to provide, provide honor and hunt. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes, it's that's awesome. Wonderful. Yes. So thank you so much for thank taking for this time me. out of your day to yes. sit down with us and join us yes. on this episode. And um, I want to thank you all for tuning into thank this you. episode as well. And uh, we will talk to you all next time. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are at the NSSF SHOT Show at the Ruger booth, and I am with one of my best friends and soul sisters, Jen O'Hara <laughs> from Girls With Guns Clothing. Hi. And I am so glad to see you. I have not seen you since September. I know, it's been too long. It is too long, mm-hmm. and it's crazy because... This these shows truly are like a family reunion Always. with our brand partners. We get to learn about new gear. We get to you know really inspire one another, and I am so inspired by you. And I think Aww. there's a lot of the listeners out there that can really uh, get a lot out of kind of hearing your story beyond Girls with Guns Clothing and the empire that you've created there, but. Being a, a working mom, holy smokes, you just had a baby. I did. Like we hunted last <laughs> April, and she was prego like. Like, way prego. I think I was eight months pregnant when we were in Hawaii. Yeah. Hunting axis deer, and you were, like, my go-to person. Aww. You were awesome. Just being there for me, helping me. Um, probably could have had to drag me along the way because I was so round. <laughs> you were perfect. It was beautiful to see you out there. You know, really, you're the example that women really don't have to compromise um, and and not have a career and not right. be women that you can really do it all. And no, I'm you not can. saying it's easy. No, but uh, it, you can. But you can do it all. Yeah. So talk to some of the ladies about what it's like being a mom of two, running a company, you know, building an empire, training as a firearms instructor. You're doing so much um, yeah. behind the scenes, in front of the scenes as a Ruger ambassador. Yes. I, I just think a lot of women would really like if they you know, feel overwhelmed at times, know that they're not alone in that, you know? You know, I think one of the things that I like to do first is I put my family first, which was a new concept for me because I was always career first my whole life and having kids in my 40s change that. Um, It's this perspective of your family really does come first. Once Mm -hmm. you have that little human and you're holding them, it changes your life. But my career is also my child. Yeah. (laughs) And it's really important to me. And so what I have tried to do is really just bring my kids into my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, And the cool part for me is that everything kind of goes hand in hand. So I have girls with guns. We create awesome hunting and outdoor apparel as well as concealed carry gear. And then I'm a firearms instructor, which teaches me so much of that time is um, with people who are my customers and people who want to learn more about guns and then I am able to put that into the clothing and Mm -hmm. what I build and what we bring in and so that's really helped a lot and then being a Ruger brand ambassador is just an incredible opportunity to represent the best firearms uh, in the industry and so I just think that it all kind of is cohesive so Mm -hmm. I'm very blessed there if I was doing multiple things and they didn't work together I think it would be a lot harder but I really just feel like I'm the lucky one who gets to do all these things and we do GWG TV Mm -hmm. which is on carbon TV Mm -hmm. and this year I'm going to be going it alone and I'm going to be bringing my kids in um, more of my just life at home homesteading um, you know different things that we're doing um, she does not live in a cabin just in case you're wondering about the homesteading (laughs) thing she has running water and toilets okay yeah I just want to put it out there Uh, she's really not a pioneer no Uh, no, but what you mean by homesteading would be just organically raising chickens having a garden hunting for harvest yes you know, being more self-sufficient. And so a lot of that happened before the pandemic. I was already hunting for our food. Um, I already had a small garden. We had a small group of chickens. And when the pandemic came in, it kind of made my mentality of, I really need to teach my kids how to be self-sufficient. Yeah. And so basically the viewers can follow along on that journey in this year so that they can see a little bit of that and what we're, we do at home. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be really neat to be able to um, show them. Our garden um, quadrupled in size since the pandemic. We Our chickens have tripled and this year we're going to be adding meat chickens. Um, we hunt for all of our red mm-hmm. meat. And I think we're going to bring in some cows this year. So just some fun stuff. It is really funny that you say that because this year I'm filming season seven for Pursue the Wild. And we're filming it as a lifestyle series as well. And I love that because I really think 
for us it truly is a lifestyle and it's something that's achievable for anybody to yeah. do. Even if you live in an apartment, like I know in the city where my husband's from, a lot of people have little tracts of land mm -hmm. in urban environments that they rent so they can still get their hands in the soil yes. and experience gardening and being part of cultivating the earth because right. it, for me it's very therapeutic. Yeah. And it you know it's a lot of hard work. I yeah, think it is a lot of hard work. My husband thinks I'm crazy because he's like how do you have a garden and do all this and mm -hmm. we have all these animals but they actually bring me so much joy. joy. And you know, because you have your mules, and mm -hmm. so I have two and a half horses. Yeah, what's the half? <laughs> Is that the mini? It's the mini. <laughs> oh, and he's, I, still, I still think that thing's full-size personality. Yes. Oh my gosh, he's kind of a jerk, but <laughs> we love Tater. Um, we're, we're working with him, he's the youngest. The other two are older, and so they're chill, which is really great for the kids. But also, just bringing that, that joy in, um, mm -hmm. being able to get out, to get horseback, to just reconnect with nature. It doesn't always have to be hunting. Mm -hmm. um, for me, we go out and we ride on the back of our property, and it's just something that's so relaxing, and as you know, just brings you back, brings you back. Oh, absolutely. And so let's talk a little bit about um, your journey with Girls With Guns Clothing. Okay. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at right now? So ladies, you know, you guys have outerwear, mid-weight yeah. clothing. Mm -hmm. um, you have your concealed casual line, which actually I'm wearing your pants right now. Ooh, me too. Because let's just be honest, I gave up jeans 10 pounds ago. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I wear leggings. I Every live day. in leggings, and, and so your concealed casual leggings are great because if I'm not concealing, I can use the pocket for my cell phone. Right, right. So, Which um, is, I'm like, that sounds so stupid, but it's no, true. It's I find true. function with them. Right. Yeah. So I think one of the cool things that have changed um, just in this last fall is we launched a brand new line. It is our Artemis Generation mm -hmm. 2, and um, we... It's, you still have the same functionality that you've come to love with Girls With Guns, but it's definitely changed. We've changed the outside look of it. We've done a little bit of color blocking. Mm -hmm. uh, we've brought in a shade 2.0 pattern, but still the same, same functionality, mm -hmm. the fleece lining. Um, and I think that our gear, we like to make it it moves with you. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things that I always struggled with before making our own gear is sometimes as a woman we have curves, we have lumps and different places mm -hmm. than men do and it was like oh it was stiff so really just comfortable to get into Nerissa always says that our Artemis pants feel like um, she's climbing into her pajamas because the fleece and the snuggly mm -hmm. um, but they, they have great functionality then we brought in our concealed casual wear mm -hmm. we have now seven different styles of leggings mm -hmm. I'm wearing the moto which you guys can't see but um, it is just to bring in different functions you we will wear every different color of legging and we should be able to conceal with them. That's right. We have trigger guard protection. We have a retention strap. Um, our holsters will fit up to a, a compact nine millimeter. For us in the way that we've built these leggings so that it's not super bulky, I, I really don't carry anything any larger, um, yeah. but the Max 9 fits amazing in these. Mm -hmm. um, also built for like the LC380. Uh, so a couple things. Um, Let's new talk, we, we yes. also have with Allen Company, you guys have your concealed casual. Yes. You have your purse line, and, and mm -hmm. I love Allen Company. They make uh, pistol cases for you guys, mm -hmm. rifle cases for yes. you. They have the concealed casual, so you have three different purses. Right. Um, so and now those each have three different colorways. And so we're, we're, we're just expanding on this yeah. all the time. And, you know, if you guys want to look at this, these lines, um, they're at Walmart. Yeah. Which I love that because every time I go into a Walmart, I'm like, hey, there's Picture. my homegirls <laughs> with their GWG. You guys have in-ear plugs that are turquoise, really cute. Yes. You guys have your fire shooting glasses. Mm -hmm. You have electronic muffs. You mm -hmm. have standard muffs. You guys literally have gone into branching out and having everything. And Allen Company is manufacturing awesome. that for you. And they're doing such a great job. So Walmart's a great place to go. Yeah. You can also go onto the Buy Allen website. And if mm -hmm. you guys use code T K Titus 10, you can save 10% on your checkout on the Buy Allen website. Yes. And check out their three lines of purses. Um, for, and they're all designed um, to be keep you you know protected you know with your with your off-body carry and we have um, a concealed carry backpack also mm -hmm. and um, we have slings we're also 
targets and bringing in some really fun, can't wait to share with you new stuff for 2024, 2025. What I love about their pistol targets is they actually have like a oval shape and then based off of where your bullet impact is going on the target, it'll tell you any potential fundament, fundamental errors that you right. might be doing with your grip or trigger press. And it's really a great training tool great for training ladies, tool. you know, when they go to the range to possibly help identify, you know, some things that they need to work on. Well, a lot of people don't have the time to go to an instructor every time. And what happens is when we don't shoot all the time, mm -hmm. we start to lose that fundamental, okay, I need to do this, I need to do that. And so for me, it really helps because I do teach it mm -hmm. at least once a month. And um, it's made me a better shooter. I do a ton of dry fire also, and then bringing my targets in and then I'll shoot. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's been a really important just to be able to train and grow as mm -hmm. a shooter myself. Yeah, and it is important that, you know, ladies feel safe while they're doing it. And so your yes. concealed casual line, you know, you're you're really touching on those mamas at home that, that want to be their first, their first yeah. responder, their first Absolutely. line of defense. Um, your ears and eyes are, you know, protecting what's most important, mm -hmm. which is our family. Right. Um, protecting those ears, protecting those eyes. Um, you guys are doing so much for training. You're mm -hmm. providing clothing that we can wear hunting. You're right. literally doing it all. And you're a firearms instructor. Yes. So talk a little bit about what you're doing in firearms instructing. So I partnered with someone in, yes, I'm in California, as Ooh. you know. <laughs> She's a Californian. So born and raised in Northern California, which is very much like Oregon, where yeah. I'm from. I moved. Yeah. Okay, I live no, in Wyoming. No, Thank you very I much. Know. <laughs> it's really hard. Oh, we I fight understand. Every I'm just, day. I'm just, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. But I get it everywhere we go forever. And it's like the, the piece of California that I live in is completely country, yeah. rural, and I wish we could just it's home yeah it yeah. is it's really hard it's so we haven't left yet but you still <laughs> have the opportunity even in a state like California and this is where I think you know everybody out there listening training and firearms ownership is accessible regardless yes. of where you live 100%. and Jen is living proof of that yeah. so talk a little bit about your oh. training so what we did <laughs> is um, I have my own range in Tehama mm -hmm. County and I train about 50 students a month mm -hmm. and so I ha offer a basic um, NRA class. I offer CCW renewals twice a month. I mean, that's how many we have coming through. And then a CCW initial. Um, I also do stuff like shotgun and rifle, but it doesn't seem to be quite as popular mm -hmm. right now as what I'm seeing mm -hmm. um, really with CCWs. So I do a lot of private training with mm -hmm. women, but like I say, they'll come in and they'll say, hey Jen, I bought your jacket. I bought your leggings. Can you help me? How do I get yeah. How do I put this all together? Because I really don't know how. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is just start them out. Sometimes I'll just have them come to my house for the first two hours and we'll go through everything dry. Because so many people don't realize they don't have um, the proper skills. So maybe their finger isn't staying along the frame of the firearm while they're drawing. And so you want to get that out before you start loading live the gun. fire mm -hmm. yes once you go to live fire and then you can start working on those things mm -hmm. so it's just like anywhere we go you know we <clears throat> reluctantly holster teaching them that nice slow and even um, especially when we have a loaded firearm mm -hmm. also teaching them I mean, something as simple as, how do I go to the bathroom and keep these leggings okay. with my gun? <laughs> Let me just tell you, her demoing going to the bathroom with a firearm and leggings on is pretty righteously hilarious. I need to do a reel. <laughs> um, but there is, you know, there are obvious safety concerns that we, as a firearms owner, you know, our number one concern is always being safe yeah. and responsible. And that goes to every aspect. Anytime we are around firearms, you know, they are our ultimate responsibility. Right. I mean, you and I have been at front sight before. We yes. were training and in the bathroom together, and there were guns dropping on the ground because yes. people did, did not, not know, know how to use the restroom with a fire. And here's Christy and I. Hey, <laughs> spread your legs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you, you need gotta learn attention. to widen your stance there so your gun doesn't fall out. But uh, it does require some training, which yeah. is is what you know. We really encourage everybody to get out and and seek out training, right. whether they be an NRA certified instructor yes. or a, a USCCA course. And here's the thing that I tell everyone. I am learning every day. The day that I stop learning will be the day that I die. But 
there was a time where I didn't know that mm -hmm. answer to that question yeah. either. So I love to just humbly come and say, please ask all your questions. Please come to me because you're in a safe space here mm -hmm. and you can come and ask. I joke about it with, you know, the bathroom thing, but really I always create a safe space for my students to come in. Um, it has been really powerful for me and empowering to teach these women who, um, I had one woman who, um, her husband's in law enforcement of sorts, and she had a very legitimate reason to carry a firearm, but was completely uncomfortable mm -hmm. and couldn't get do it in a classroom setting. We sat aside time, and I started working with her consistently, and I think it took about four or five times changing a firearm out, mm -hmm. and now she's proficient. She carries every day and to she's protect confident. her two kids. Yes. The confidence, it changed. It went mm -hmm. from barely hitting a target to coming into a grouping like this. And I think a lot of it is just overcoming that fear and apprehension. Mm. And that's one of the things like with Shoot Like a Girl, Karen Butler has a yeah. great program where women can go into one of her trailers and, and pick up a, a functioning firearm that's, that's loaded with a CO2 cartridge and they can mm -hmm. actually get 80% of true recoil without actually firing a projectile. Yeah. They can learn how to manipulate the slide. Snap caps are another great option. You know, practicing with snap caps or your dry fire, your manipulating of your slides, so that when you actually do go live fire, you're comfortable, you feel like you understand what's going on, and you're safe. Right, 100%, and safety is number one. So even if you have no other options, start out dry at home in a sterile environment with no ammo. A hundred percent. So all of everybody can kind of go online. You go to gwgclothing.com. Um, what's the website exactly on that? gwgclothing.com or on Instagram. I'm gwgjen, and then it's Girls with Guns Clothing, and of course Facebook as well. And then if you guys are also looking at any of their. Um, gun cases, pistol cases, rifle slings, targets, eyes, ears. You can go to the Buy Allen website, mm -hmm. so B-Y-A-L-L-E-N.com. Use code KTITUS10, and you'll save 10% on checkout. Yeah. Or go to one of their retail, retail partners like a Walmart. Yeah, awesome. Thank it's you great so to see much you. for joining us. And you guys, this woman has two kids, and she's doing all of this. So you all can do it, too, no matter where you are in life, no matter what state you live in. You can train. You <laughs> You can be safe, you can be a responsible firearms owner, you can participate in shooting sports. You can do it all. This woman is living proof. Thank you all for joining us yes, for this you. episode of the Wild Nine Cut podcast, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, I'm Christy Titus, and for the past several years, I've really come to rely on OnX Hunt for mapping both in and out of the field. But now I'm also using it to plan and research units for my application season. Onyx has teamed up with TopRet to show you everything that you need for draw odds in most of the Western states. And access to TopRet services is completely free to all elite members. I now have both the power of Onyx Hunt and TopRet to help me strategize my state hunting applications. If you haven't already, download Onyx Hunt and upgrade to the Elite membership to access Top Rut as well as other great Elite benefits. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut Podcast. We're still coming at you from the NSSF SHOT Show at the Burger Booth, and I'm here with a longtime friend of mine, Ms. Karen Butler. And Karen, you started with Shoot Like a Girl, but since have expanded. Holy smokes, you now have Safe Living, you have Hunt Like a Girl, and you have Shoot Like a Girl Consulting. Like, right. You have gone from when I met Karen... <laughs> She had hay bales and a couple of bows, and we were at a sports expo, and she was teaching women how to shoot archery, to now having two trailers and an absolute empire, encouraging right. women to take up safe shooting sports, and now all-inclusive for men. All-inclusive for men, too. So we've had such a great year. You know, we started the business in 2008, mm -hmm. and you're right. I had, like, this rickety rack of bows, and it, it was, was so funny. It was a rickety funny. rack of bows. It was, it, it, that's what it we was, call grassroots. Yeah activism right there okay it, it was and we started that and we had a plan to add a trailer in yeah. five years we added a trailer at 10 years we uh, expanded that trailer to a semi tractor trailer my mom still can't believe I own a semi truck <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and then, I get it and then now
now, um, now we've expanded with Safe Living and we're so excited because we found this need to really bring shooting sports to everyone mm -hmm. and really then that safety message, mm -hmm. you know, that Ruger is so good with mm -hmm. as well. And we just really want to focus on that safety message mm -hmm. and introducing as many people as we can to shooting sports and as many communities. And when I say communities, I really mean everybody. Yeah. So everyone just needs a safe place to come and get information mm -hmm. about safety. And our website, Christy, it's going to have everything. We have like 10 tips for mm -hmm. preventing seniors from falling, mm -hmm. but then we also have firearm safety and how to secure your gun and all mm -hmm. of those things that we really need to focus on as a community of creating safe, responsible gun owners. What I love about Shoot Like a Girl, their main philosophy or like the backbone of it is they take the fear out of firearms because what they have is functional firearms that are charged with a CO2 cartridge. So women and now men can go into one of their trailers and they can actually learn to manipulate the slide on a firearm, uh, engage or disengage a safety, shoot the firearm, and they get an 80% true recoil without firing a projectile. That's right. So it takes that fear out of the process. Um, it's similar to a snap cap, but now you have recoil. Right, you have recoil. So you have recoil, impact, and sound. It's the most realistic system you can use. We use an embarrassed system. It really does give them an actual, this is going to the range, but no fear of that projectile. And really, we find most of the people don't shoot because they're afraid. They're mm -hmm. afraid they're gonna hurt someone mm -hmm. or themselves. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of what all the media says about firearms. You know, they have a stigma to them. And when we can break it down and show them that there's five simple things you can do to keep safe. Mm -hmm. And you know those rules yes. as well as I do. L look, y'all, you gotta keep your finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot. Mm -hmm. You have to um, always treat a gun like it's loaded you want to keep that gun safely storage go you know find those those five safety know your target and, right, what's know your target beyond what's in front right, right exactly yeah, there's there's we say five safety rules but there, there's, there's like endless ten. amount of safety rules and right. we all want to be as safe as we can but we also want to be confident with our skill set when we're handling a firearm especially right. when it comes down to you know holstering a firearm right walking around with a firearm if you make that choice or simply going to the range what's good range etiquette right. you guys are offering that first step to a woman right. or a man right. to come in shoot a bow shoot a firearm right. have that experience and then give them the confidence right. to, to want to make that next step. Right, and they need to make that next step. It's not enough to just buy a firearm, we all mm -hmm. know that. You have to go get training and you have to be proficient with that mm -hmm. firearm, if, especially if you're gonna use it for self-defense because God forbid you come to that situation, mm -hmm. you really need that muscle memory. So we encourage them to Google women's groups where they are for our ladies mm -hmm. and our Google training and, and uh, other training mm -hmm. platforms get that training they need to be safe. Um, but we really want them to come and see us at Safe Living or Shoot Like a Girl. We're doing 30 events right now. Okay. We hope to get to 40. Um, you can find those schedules on shootlikeagirl.com or safeliving2.com and we are just thrilled and hopefully we can get you out there. Yeah. And I just have to say, I always have to say, y'all, you know, that right here with Christy Titus, there is not one woman in the industry that is representing women better than she does. Oh, geez. And I'm just so. No, we're, yes. a, we're a team. It's we a are team. a team. We're but all I'm a telling team. You what, I don't I do what she her. does. I look up to you. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what's really all about is that we all have our own strength in our right. place. And what you're doing is incredible. Women can come there, have that, that first experience with a firearm or a renewed experience yeah. with a firearm. But then outside you guys' trailer, what I really love too is you guys have a lot of platforms of pistols from revolvers to semi-automatics right. to bolt action rifles, shotguns. Yep. Women can actually touch these firearms, put them in their hands, see how Correct. they feel, um, rack the slides, it just start getting that sense of, well, I like the way this one feels, or right. this one doesn't, this one, the grip feels a little bulky in right. my hands, or, you know, kind of have yes. that experience so that when they're ready to actually purchase a firearm, they have some of these basics, um, 
un, uh, explained to them or demonstrated right. to them, and they're kind of learning as an ev evolution of right. experience on what is going to be the right choice of firearm for them. Right, and they figure out what they like and what they don't like yeah. really easily with all those deactivated mm -hmm. firearms to side-by-side -side mm -hmm. compare. And then we also do pepper spray demonstrations, mm -hmm. what's in your range bag, how to clean a gun. And so when they come to an event with Shoot Like a Girl or Safe Living, they're going to get this comprehensive experience where they really can look at um, all of the things that come with fire, fire um, arms ownership mm -hmm. and really make great decisions because you know you need a lot of other things besides a gun and ammo mm -hmm. right you need a safe right mm -hmm. safe storage is a big key mm -hmm. and we have safes on display so they can actually learn about those biometric safes mm -hmm. and how they work and the key fob safes mm -hmm. like what safe is best for your lifestyle mm -hmm. And it's just um, incredible for us to be able to um, work with partners like Ruger and other people and get people in there to see what they need to learn and grow and really join this community of great greatness. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, when you go to the range and you shoot your gun and you hit your target, <laughs> yeah. It's a ton of it's fun. Ton and of fun. That's one of the things, I was talking with Doug Koenig earlier, um, the adrenaline rush and the exhilaration from participating in shooting sports is only matched by hunting. <laughs> so, um, right. and, and I would say hunting is more exciting, but um, truly they Definitely. have an equivalent of, of excitement. You know, what I personally love about hunting obviously is a harvest and being a provider. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, that has been so impactful um, to providing. There's a lot of single women out there and a lot of single right. women that are raising uh, boys. And right. teaching them to hunt is something that's achievable. And, you know, taking that first steps, coming and meeting you guys, getting yeah. the empowerment that they need to make that next step and right. make that decision. And you really, we're, you are changing the lives of people by giving them the confidence mm -hmm. to be their own first responder, to be a provider. Right. Um, and I'm so proud of everything that Thank you're you. doing, Karen. And Thank so you. for ladies that want to learn where, where a shoot like a girl or the uh, safe living trailer is going to be for co-ed right. um, experiences, where, where can they go for that? Yep. So shoot like a girl dot com. We'll have our schedule mm -hmm. and safe living dot com okay. and or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You can just Google search us or search us there and mm -hmm. find us. And we um, really look forward to having you come to an event and experiencing it and then get out there. You know, on hunting, I do want to say, you know, know 27 percent of the ladies that come through our program say they don't hunt but they want to yeah and so if you are a hunter or you are a shooter why don't you ask the person you think is least likely to ever want to go to the range with you ask them if they want to go because odds are they are thirsty for knowledge mm -hmm. just like uh, the rest of the people that we see and they might the be afraid to reach out and ask right so yeah. ask them mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's great bring a friend we love that and um, check out shoot like a girl safe living they've got a full schedule there are there are over 30 events nationwide where you can go in and connect with these ladies Karen thank you so much for, thank you Christy th for making the time at SHOT Show I know it's so chaotic here um, great and for you coming down here really means a lot. We sure appreciate you. We love everything that you're doing and look forward to continue uh, watching your journey in helping these women and men now across right. the country. Right. And thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are coming at you from the NSSF SHOT Show and we are with my friend GP Searle from Core Cases. And GP, like we just met, I don't know, six months ago, virtually. So this is our first time, well, second time actually. Second time. Technically meeting. Yep. But you're one of the most innovative products, I would say, at SHOT Show right now. And I'm totally blown away by what you're doing with your cases and the case material that you're building for transportation of firearms. And nobody else has ever done this. You're eliminating cutting foam. Your cases, the construction, everything. Tell everybody about how revolutionary your product is. Yeah, so we came up with this system because a question my wife asked me, why do you have so many cases? Yeah. And I didn't have a straight answer. Yeah. So I said, nobody makes one, but I will. Yeah. So the idea came from vacuum splints in the medical industry. Okay. So basically, if you think of a beanbag, you sit in a beanbag and it forms to your shape. Yeah. And when you get up, somebody else's shape takes it. That's correct. But if I, you're sitting in that beanbag and I pull all the air out of it, that beanbag forms to your body shape. And it becomes or my a body rigid shape, surface. And it's a rigid structure. So we took that principle and applied it to gun case inserts. So now you have one case for everything in your safe. 
and you can move your product around. So if you want to bring a spotting scope on one trip and you don't on the next or you're adding kestrels, taking them away, whatever it is, you can reuse this insert and it's brand new for every application as you change firearms, optics, whatever. Yeah, it's custom fit for every trip. So That is so awesome, you guys. Like no more cutting foam. This is this is old school. <laughs> this is the one part you need is a siphon pump and our VRS bag. So VRS is vacuum rigidizing structure. Okay. So we use a mil spec material for the fabric so it won't tear, it won't puncture, it won't rip, won't hold water, oil, you know, solvents. Um, and then on the inside, we have a media that basically, when it's in fluid state like this bag right here, mm -hmm. you pack it with whatever it, you want. Yeah, it feels like a beanbag chair. Right. It's like I could sit on this and lay down and take a nap. It's nice. And then once you connect your siphon pump, that bag turns to a rigid structure like this. Wow. And literally envelopes your firearms, your optics, your gear, your spotting scopes, your kestrel. And so everything stays in its place during transit. Mm -hmm. And the beads absorb the micro vibrations in transit, so your optics are always zeroed when you get to your hunt mm -hmm. or get to the range. You're never off zero and wasting ammo. Or you use night force. Yeah. And well, you don't stress about that, okay? Then you don't have to at all. Wink, wink, shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> JK, perfect, no, this though. is incredible, though, because when we are flying internationally, things can get broken. And we all know, like, the airlines, they're not nice with our guns. They're not nice with firearms. Um, and, and it's a major issue, especially when you're relying on that to show up intact on a trip of a lifetime, whether it be a match or a hunt or whatever. Exactly. And we've flown with this product um, at least on 28 yeah. national flights and 12 international flights. We've had it in 55 below zero on polar bear muskox hunts. We've had it down in the heat of Arizona and mm -hmm. Mexico. We've never had an issue. So one thing about this system, what I like is you can get your hard case, um, which you know has a higher retail point. You guys are making it with carbon fiber, correct? Correct. And super tough, um, and Kevlar, correct? Correct. It's like a combo, you know, yeah, carbon so fiber Kevlar. The thing I found with a lot of cases is we wanted to go ultra light. Like, okay. what? How can we get a case as light as can be, and as slim as can be, but still durable enough to yeah. protect our high value gear? Yeah. So we went with carbon fiber and on the hinges actually, we have carbon fiber and Kevlar, so there's no moving parts yeah. in the case. Um, we integrate four high security locks and latches, so that counts for TSA as a locked hard-sided case. Perfect. But we CNC the lugs and hasps, so you have an additional place to put your own personal padlocks. Mm -hmm. So really you have six locks on a case. Nobody's Tons getting of security. In. But if you don't want to buy your cases, you what can, I love mm. about it is your insert. Um, actually, you can retrofit an existing case you have under $400. Correct. Which is so, awesome because it's price point effective and you can make your current case into something totally badass. Exactly. And that was what we wanted to strive for is rather than going full carbon and investing a lot of money, we wanted to offer something where you can retrofit your existing case mm -hmm. and say goodbye to foam. And foam is also really detrimental to the environment because it's not recyclable, it's not compostable, it just goes in a landfill yeah. and it takes forever. Yeah. And who enjoys cutting out foam. and shaping out foam? That Look, we all know I'm not an artist. Okay. That degrades, holds moisture, you know, yeah. and all the frustration. Yeah. And by the time you get through that in one set, you might as well buy our insert and be done for life mm -hmm. because this literally is custom formed every single trip. So show us how this works right now. Right now we're in fluid state. Yeah, so so big solid bean bag. bag. Mm -hmm. So you take your trusty Marlin 1895 I with suppressor <laughs> and you just nestle it in. You don't even have to push okay. it down. You grab your siphon pump and switch the hose to the intake valve. Okay. Connect in the corner. Okay. And then and now as I pull the air, the air out, you're going to notice the texture of the bag change. And that state and is going from... And it's becoming rigid instantly. Instantly. From fluid beads to a solid entity. Wow. That's very impressive. And then now there is no lateral movement no. whatsoever. Your and firearm. And it's completely form-fitted to the firearm. Correct. And then the top, when you Drop close down. the case, the top foam provides the vertical compression. Mm -hmm. So none of your gear moves in transit and it will hold that shape infinitely until you push air back into the system. It's totally revolutionary. I am so impressed with this. So when people wanna 
purchase this system, where is there? Where are your points of distribution right now? So right now, currently, you can go directly to our website, okay. courtcases.com. And it's K-O-R. K-O-R-C-A-S-E-S.com. Um, this is the Fiverr. Um, we also make a smaller size. They'll be on the website soon. Um, and then also Optics Planet is currently mm -hmm. carrying it. Mm -hmm. um, they've been really good to us. And, you know, we're hoping to grow distribution of out course. of SHOT Show and see what, you know, see how many people we can help alleviate the problem of cutting and plucking foam and storing it and having eight cases. Guys, your wives will be really happy <laughs> when you get rid of cases. <laughs> I Mine have was. so many cases, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so with this though, the foam ins or not the, the insert, what is it called again? The exact technical name you're calling the insert? VRS. The VRS insert. So when you order this, can you order it single, like a one gun case, two gun case? Is there different dimensions to the VRS? There are. Okay. There are. So, and we list the cases okay. that are compatible. Perfect. And, and most cases, most long gun cases are compatible. You okay. may have a little give or take. And we drape the fabric in such a way so that you can push it in or extend it out. Okay. So you have that fluidity to retrofit your existing case without having to buy a whole new system. Mm -hmm. And our system is really great because you need a bag and this pump. And that's it. And that's it. And each each kit comes with a patch kit. I've been running one for three years now and I've never had to patch. I actually had to cut a hole in this case for our YouTube to show how to patch it properly. And it took a lot of effort with my knife to get through this TPU mill spec material. Okay, that's incredible. Well, it's super tough, and this is incredible. On your on your hard sided core cases, those come in a single gun and double gun case. Right now, we just have the single gun available okay. on the website, and then the double gun. We're still making some changes okay. um, to make it lighter. Coming soon. Yeah. Coming soon. It'll be yeah. out this year. Yeah. Um, but that case is 59 inches clear on the inside, so you can fit two scoped rifles with suppressors inside the case that's fantastic because that's another thing you know you throw a suppressor on these rifles and a lot of the optics today you know nobody has one inch two rifle scopes anymore i mean sometimes very rarely and so i've found that it, it, the width wise on a lot of these scopes is a little pinchy or these a lot of these cases are a little pinchy with, with modern day optics you know increasing in size and performance characteristics so that's yeah. great several case sizes the vrs is available online right now you guys go and check out core cases it's k-o-r-c-a-s-e-s -E uh, anything else that we should know about this product no i think it's revolutionary i hope you all give us a yeah. chance to show you what's possible and how much frustration we can take out of your yeah. life and say goodbye to foam and yeah i really appreciate your time oh, Christy. Hey, it's thanks my pleasure. for coming by i appreciate you and you guys get online go to core cases dot com K -O -R -C -A -S -E -S, and uh, say hi to GP if you see him at the SHOT Show. Are you going to be at any other shows this year demoing? Yeah, we'll be at Safari Club in Nashville okay. in February, and so okay. we hope to see you all there. Yeah, sounds good, you guys. Come to SCI, check out his booth, uh, Core Cases, and uh, we'll see you all later. Thank you for joining us for this segment of the Wild Nun Cut podcast. A buck's antler growth potential is tied directly to his nutritional intake. The quicker they recover from the stress of the rut and the harsh elements found in winter months, the sooner they can begin new antler development. Supplemental nutrition, like the Rack One system, promotes healthy deer herds and jumpstarts new antler growth. Rack One's grow phase is specifically designed to provide everything that deer need to recover and reach their genetic potential. Accelerator is the apex when it comes to optimizing whitetail mineral intake. And Big Game Butters fuel deer with 22% protein and 44% fat to boost antler growth and supercharge recovery. To learn more about the grow, scout, or hunt systems from Rack One, visit the website at huntrack1.com. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut Podcast. We're coming at you from the NSSF SHOT Show. We're at the Ruger booth and we're with the one and only Miss Brittany French from Pass It On Outdoors. Brittany, you are doing some incredible things for with kids in the outdoors. You're mentoring, you've mentored over 1,500 kids. That's so incredible. And I really want to share with what you're doing with the hunting outdoor shooting sports community. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Yeah, so our mission is to get kids out hunting, fishing, enjoying outdoor recreation through mentorship. So with our program coordinators on the ground, we're able to conduct and coordinate all these opportunities for these kids, which, yeah, so over 1,500 kids got out hunting with us in 2022, and that was over 505 events all across the state of Kansas and Iowa. So how do people 
get involved with yeah. with your organization. Yeah, we we welcome all people, right? Uh, mentors anywhere, few far and in between the state of Kansas, Iowa. We're hoping to expand into a few other Midwest mm -hmm. states. Uh, we welcome you to apply as a mentor. We'll walk you through that process. And then kids anywhere from the age of 11 all the way up to college age, we take out um, on these these adventures. So you're taking them hunting, you're taking them to shoot sporting clays. What, what, are, what are kids exactly getting out and doing? Oh yeah, anything and everything. So mm -hmm. we're taking them from deer hunting to waterfowl hunting to predator, squirrel hunting, small game, you name it. They are welcome to sign up for as many events as they want. Um, and we don't we don't balk at that. We encourage it. We want them to keep hunting with us, so eventually they become independent and confident enough to go on their own. A hundred percent. You're teaching these kids lifelong skills that are going to not only provide them confidence and ex outdoor experiences, but also help them provide later on as a as a hunter. Yes, especially if they come from a family that Doesn't wasn't brought hunt. up in the outdoors. Absolutely. Like how do you how do you get started? That's so scary, especially mm -hmm. as a kid. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to equip them with all that knowledge and that skill set and with passionate mentors, kind of like yourself, right? To show yeah. them the ropes. Well, that's what we're all here to do. I mean, um, the greatest gift we give somebody is not a gift, it's our time. Yes. And no one ever forgets how you make them feel. And when you give someone time in the outdoors, they're never going to forget how they felt outside in that mm -hmm. moment and how much confidence they had or how they maybe mm -hmm. overcame an adversity whether it be cold weather or rain or snow or maybe they missed right um you know how did they overcome dust it off and keep going and learn perseverance and these are lifelong skills that are, are really uh, helping shape these kids into well-rounded awesome adult in adult individuals. Yes. Yeah, and what people don't I think realize you're equipping these kids with such confidence and mm -hmm. skills and life experiences that they'll apply throughout their entire life, but as a mentor, you're mm -hmm. getting so much back too. To be 100%. able to be selfless and share your time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could go on for hours and hours about lessons I've learned from the kids I've mm -hmm. I've taken into the field and it's priceless. Are the kids, do they apply for a scholarship then, mm -hmm. or how is your program funded? Yeah, so this is the fun part. We're a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. have been around for 21 years, uh, and we do all of the fundraising, so these kids do it for free. There's mm -hmm. no cost associated. We do have them buy their own licenses mm -hmm. and tags, permits, things like that, mm -hmm. for them to learn that process, mm -hmm. get skin in the game. Yeah, but otherwise, 100%. all of these outfitting opportunities, all of these hunting experiences are free to them. That is incredible. You're making hunting accessible. So any kid that has interest in, in, mm -hmm. in parental support, obviously, yes, can come and apply and participate in your program. You guys have qualified mentors, mm -hmm. safe hunts. You're teaching firearms responsibility, yes. hunter safety. Um, do kids have to have hunter safety to participate? They do, yep. That's our one requirement is that they come with hunter education. They don't need to have a firearm. They don't have to have any prior mm -hmm. experience. They mm -hmm. could even come to us with some experience. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't mind that. We want kids to really get two feet in and just enjoy every part of what we have to offer. So the first part, you guys, if you are wanting to participate in this program, get online, go to the IHEA website, which is International Hunter Education Association, and register your child for a hunter ed program yes, near them with a qualified instructor. That's your first step. Second step, once that's done, then you can come and apply for a scholarship or a grant, um, an opportunity for yeah. your child to get out and hunt. And, and and your opportunities are listed out on the site. Oh yeah. Are they by date? Yeah, so we have a youth sign up form. So mm -hmm. once a parent fills that out for their kiddo, same with a mentor, either way, looking to get involved, uh, we route you to our website where there's mm -hmm. calendars or events for each date mm -hmm. we are hosting um, opportunities in right now. Simple as find your event, the date, the location, mm -hmm. sign up for it, and then we take care of the rest from there. That is incredible with what you're doing. What what are some of like the most profound experiences you just give us one or two yeah. like heartwarming tales because I, I don't know, for me personally, I love seeing the miracle happen with these kids mm -hmm. in the woods and that's really what makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, there's a sweet gal, Kanaya, that I've been mentoring for quite a long time now. Um, and she got and started with us at 11 years of age, so pretty mm -hmm. young. Never shot a gun before, never gone hunting before. So walking through the steps of shooting her first pheasant to mm -hmm. shooting her first deer. We took her to Wyoming on the Sisterhood of the Outdoors antelope hunt one year, and she shot a beautiful antelope. Oh, um, how awesome. I know. So to see her build these relationships with other women in the outdoors, mm -hmm. but also learn responsibility is just so profound. So one mm -hmm. season we were deer hunting, and she shot her deer, and I had a chance to shoot one as well. So we switched spots in the blind. and. All of a sudden, this deer comes in. I hear her coaching me in the background. Like, Brandy, do you see her? The deer's coming in. Oh, do you see it? it you know, head's down. It's grazing. Do you, oh, that's a great shot. You can take it now if you're ready. Mm -hmm. And 
I mean, I almost was tearing up and like Aww. a whole moment like, oh my gosh, she's mentoring me. Aww. And it's just so special to see that. And now she's, you know, 19 years old and came back and said, hey, how do I mentor my friends? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Ugh. that's exactly the community and the story we're trying to create yes. is taking a kid from a mentee and helping them develop the skill set to where they can now become a future mentor right. to other kids. And yes. what an incredible story. Now, your Wyoming Women's Antelope Hunt, you're doing that in conjunction with Sisterhood of the Outdoors, correct? Yeah, yeah. So we, every year for the past six years now, we've taken four to four to five, sometimes three girls out uh, antelope hunting in Wyoming. Mm-hmm. For people that don't know what antelope hunting in, in Wyoming looks mm-hmm. like, it's not just for the faint of heart. So yeah. these kiddos, especially coming from like Kansas where I bring a yeah. kiddo every year, I mean, their minds are just opened up to a world of possibilities, yeah. but they cultivate such rich relationships mm-hmm. with other women and girls uh, mm-hmm. on the trip. Yeah, and what I love about this too is they're able to take home the meat from their harvest, oh, yeah. bring it to their family, share that full field to fork experience with the people that mm-hmm. they love and tell their story about how the outdoors are transforming their yeah. lives, transforming the lives of their children. Um, for women and kids, it is so important that women and kids specifically get involved in hunting and shooting mm-hmm. sports because as we know, if mama's in, kids are Everyone's in. in. Everyone's in. When mom's invested, everyone's invested in. And it's so important that we create this community. And we thank you Mm -hmm. so much for what you're doing. So go ahead and give a plug on Instagram, Facebook, website. Where can people specifically reach out and connect with you? Yeah, so outdoormentors.org is our website. You can find us on Facebook at the same, same tag, Outdoor Mentors, and Instagram. Thank you so much Christy, for thank joining you. us today here for this episode of the Wild Nut Cut Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in uh, here at NSSF Shot Show at the Ruger booth. Um, Ruger is is you know number one philosophy is safe, responsible firearms or, or firearms ownership, and it's people like mm-hmm. you um, that really make what we do um, so so impactful. So well, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, we appreciate thank you, you very for that. Much. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.